Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, honey. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. So for the past two years, I have been dealing with depression from losing my mother. Even though I have a beautiful family that's with me every day, supporting me, um, this pain that I feel every day, it makes me feel lonely. And losing her, I felt like I lost a part of myself. I felt lost. I felt confused. It's really hard to explain. But um, after two years of dealing with grief, I feel like I'm in a place, a better place, where I'm strong enough to share my journey. I'm strong enough to share with you all my feelings. And I feel like by doing this, it's also going to help me um, heal. I also hope that this video will help someone else out there not feel so lonely. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Okay, so today I have this crazy psychic greeting with this girl named April. Um, before I get into all of this, I need to clean up the room. So, yeah. Yeah, you think so, baby? I think I want to do Okay. Do you think um, Grandma is going to come through the reading? Never. Yeah, you think so? Can you tell grandma to come through the reading and talk to mommy because mommy misses her so much? Can you tell her that for me? Okay. Well, people say babies can talk to the people who pass or ghosts or whatever. So in case that's true, I'm sending a little message through my princess. Okay. Will you help mommy clean before we start the reading? Press the button. I had so much nerves. I was so nervous. Um, felt like throwing up. So much was building on to this reading and... I am so nervous, like I'm literally shaking. And she ended up having to reschedule me because her internet was working. Every time that I feel that I'm closer to reaching my mom, or at least talking to her, this happens. Sitting there with all my emotions, I told the camera everything. My mom was so beautiful. She loved me so much. She loved me and my sister so, so much. And I think not until I became a mom was when I realized how much she really loved me. And I wished so badly she was alive when I became a mom to tell me these things. Because I never understood the extent of her love until now. Now it's too late. It felt like it was time that it was time for me to share how my mom passed. She was my neighbor. We moved her in so she's closer to us. Um, and we saw each other every day except for the weekends. My dog, Cash, he died just weeks before Rain was born and it crushed my soul. And my mom was there too at the bed. I didn't get out of the house. All I did was eat and lay in bed and cried and cried and cried. That week when Cash died, my mom, I guess, was telling me how she her leg was hurting. And she thinks it's from her exercising so much in the morning. And if she could borrow my massager. And I said, yeah, of course, I gave it to her. I remember the last day, or that night when she passed, we went on a walk. I think it was Friday. Um, she was very pale. 
but me being um, out of it and not really in the right mindset, I wasn't noticing it, I guess. Um, we went on a walk. We talked about rain. We talked about Hawaii, how excited we were. I remember getting a hug and telling her I love her. Um, the day after, maybe a day and a half after, that was Friday, <laughs> Sunday morning, my sister called me and said, have you talked to mom? I said, no, not yet. Um, she says she's not answering my calls and that's very unlike my mom. I was like, okay. Let me go over to the house and check in on her. And well, no, and I walked across the street to my mom's and um, <laughs> and I walked upstairs to her room. I've actually never talked about this or even thought about it since. But the fact that I have to talk about it, it really hurts. <laughs> I found her in her bed. So much guilt went through me. Why did I not notice? Why did I not notice? <laughs> I blamed myself so much for it. And this was something I never even told my own friends because when it was happening, it, was, it hurt me too much to share. But that day, I felt like it was time. It really hit me hard. It was probably the biggest heartache of my life. And I don't think anyone would ever understand how bad something like that hurts or how bad um, Something like this affects your life. Um, I think it came out that she had a stroke. Just feel like it was very sudden. Came out of nowhere. No one saw it coming. I was finally able to get my reading with April. And let me tell you, seeing her on that screen was just a bag of emotions. So, have you ever had a reading before? I have. So as the psychic, I connect to your guides along with mine and they give me information on past, present, and future. And they steer me into directions in which you may be having a little difficulty. You need some clear guidance. They're gonna help give their assistance on that. I was excited. I was relieved that I finally got to talk to her. Um, I just felt like everything I've been trying to do, contacting my mom, was finally happening. And it was just so exciting for me. It was definitely a day to remember. And. I will never forget that reading. Alrighty, so what I'd like you to do is just in your head, go in ahead and ask your loved ones in spirit to come forward. All right, honey. All right, you have three people coming forward. I do recognize one of them as being your mom. And then I also have a grandmother and an uncle on the other side as well. Of course, I had my doubts that it wasn't gonna work or if this was even real. But I think that's normal. I think that's normal to have those feelings when you're going into something like this that's new and very unconventional, so. Oh, your mom's 
Uh, sorry, one more time? She says really quickly. What happened really quickly? Oh, she says her passing happened very quickly. She says things happened so rapidly. She says that there wasn't a proper opportunity to have our sense of reconciliation or even closure prior to my departure. Do you understand that with your mom? Yeah. And she says that she wants to apologize for that because she says that she says because things transpired so quickly, she says, I ran out of time. I, I ran out of time to like change my ways or I ran out of time to like uh, really like step into my it's almost like she's saying like place of peace like she keeps telling me like her whole life was full of like hardships do you understand that with your mom your mom talks about like an abusive relationship that she was in so do you understand that she was in a very difficult relationship yeah do you know if there's like a disconnection between you and your dad when my mom left my dad because of the abusive relationship i went with her and recently after her passing me and him got really close Mm -hmm. But she says to me that she's glad to see that you're placing healthy boundaries in that yeah. relationship between what you are willing to accept in your life. One moment that shocked me the most, that I was convinced this was the real thing, was when she brought up the car. I, I, want, I want my daughter to know that I heard her words, okay? She says, I know that I, I couldn't respond the way that you wanted me to. And she says, I, I want you to know that I hear you every day. She says, even in those moments where you're driving in your car alone and talking to me, she says, I hear you. She says, please know that I'm giving you my love in return. And I she's her all the time in the car. This ice cream is actually so good. I'm telling you the dead honest truth. This is bomb. What do you think, mom? I really like it. And my mom really liked it. She got the taro. She says, that's our, she calls it like our meditation time, like our time together. That was our time together. We used to run errands together. She says, she just said like, we'll always be your co-pilot. Like she'll always be in the car with you. Okay. That is something I have never told anyone. Um, I think the only person that knows about it is my husband, Will. The fact that the medium brought that up how oh, my mom says she's sorry that she can't talk back to me that really got me i wanted to grab my mom's dress that she wore on my baby shower and let's grab the dress i think the last dress i remember seeing her in when she was all dressed up so hopefully this dress means a lot to me because we really bonded with me having a baby and my mom's. Oh, thank Here's you, honey. Your mom's rosary. Thank you. And um, what's this blouse that you have? That's hers or something like that. Oh, her sweater, beautiful. Okay, so yeah. she's acknowledging she like also has a blouse too that I keep in yeah. small. <laughs> so, for the rest of the reading, I was convinced it was real. I felt my mom's presence there. What's the significance of this month? I'm not sure. Birthday, death date, or anniversary? Um, mine and well, mine and my husband's anniversary when we Beautiful. met. So please know that she's acknowledging this anniversary. Okay. Happy anniversary, Will and Elaine. I hope you have many years happy. You are kind and wonderful people. And I have to go back to what she was saying before. I know my granddaughter. She keeps saying, I know my granddaughter. Like, I know her. It's like, she, she knew her before you even knew her. Grandma? Oh, honey. Yeah. In Just fact, did she know you were pregnant before you even knew you were pregnant? <laughs> No, um, I had my baby through surrogacy, so we were on the journey together. Oh, interesting. Just know that she's like watching over your daughter, okay? But she says that your mom says that she also messes with lights as well. So please keep in mind I said that, okay? The lights flicker all the time. And sometimes mm -hmm. I think it's like her, but... Yes, just keep talking to her. She says that's my way of responding, okay? That reading definitely served its purpose. Um, gave me everything I was looking for. It made me feel a little closer to my mom. You know, 
that maybe when someone passes, they're not really gone. And I think that's kind of like the bright side of everything, that just because someone passes doesn't mean they're really completely gone. And then my mom passed literally like a week before my daughter was born, so mm -hmm. that hurt a lot. I'm not having her here. And I just want to tell her that I love her so much. Yeah. Now that I'm a mom, I just want her to know that I appreciate her. Absolutely. She knows that. And I just want to tell her that I love her so much. I love you, Mommy. You're so pretty. Mommy, it's a video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so after the reading I was trying to explain to the camera how I was feeling but my mind was like all over the place I don't know I'm speechless I'm happy I'm sad it's probably gonna take me some time to digest how I'm feeling or be able to put my feelings into words because right now I'm honestly speechless I don't know how I'm feeling to be honest after this whole experience, um, I guess one thing I learned from it is that there is no right way of dealing with grief. There is no answer on how to make yourself feel better. And I think my only advice for anyone out there dealing with grief is to do whatever you think might make you feel better. As unconventional or as weird or as different as you may think it is. If you think there's a shot on it making you feel better, go for it. Because this experience definitely helped me. Even, if, even though it was just a little bit that made me feel better, it's still a lot in my eyes. I do feel more connected to my mom more than ever. And I do plan on talking to my mom again th through April, hopefully in a few months. Um, I do strongly believe that my mom is here with me and that the next time I talk to her in the car, she's actually listening. Um, I know she's watching After Rain and I know that she's here with me but just in a different form. <laughs> I wanted to use this video as a love letter to my mom to let her know how special she is to me. And by having this video, maybe Somehow, I can keep her alive through it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mommy. Happy birthday to you. This video is for you, mom. I love you. And thank you for watching over me.